Here we are in the beautiful wilderness where we see a brave believer in Jesus practicing his calls of the wild. Ah, the pileated woodpeckers. A hippopotamus. And that, ah, uh, well, I'm not quite sure what that one was. What was that? Hey, what well, how to do, my kids club crew? I hope you guys haven't been waiting too long. Did you see me practicing my animal calls? Oh, I don't know what it is about being out in the wilderness that really brings out my animal instincts. <laughs> you may be wondering, what I'm doing out here all alone in the middle of the wilderness? Well, to be honest, I got left behind. I was with a group of wilderness explorers but I stopped to practice my animal calls, and the next thing I know, I'm out here doing my Sasquatch call all alone. I, I'll catch up with them at some point, but this gives me a chance to talk with my friends. That's you, you're my friends. <laughs> you know, being left behind isn't a great feeling, what if I get lost or, or what if I start to feel lonely and get sad? Being left behind is never fun. But guess what? Even if I'm left behind a million times by my friends or co-workers or the wilderness explorers, I know there's someone who will never leave me. Hey, can you guess who that is? I'll give you a hint. His name starts with a G. Do you got it yet? I'll give you another hit. His name ends with a D. <laughs> Getting closer. I'll give you one last hit. There's an O in the middle of his name. <laughs> it's God. God never leaves us. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, God is always with us. That's right. Today's big idea is God never leaves us. And that's because God loves us. Who said it? Good day, mate. It's me, the narrator. The narrator? I didn't know I had a narrator. I pop in from time to time. Pretty cool. Well, why can't I see you? Well, because I'm at the studio recording this voiceover while watching you on a screen. Whoa, <laughs> have you been here this whole time? I sure have. Now that's wild. <laughs> it's kind of like how God is always with us. Kind of, except God is in heaven and God never leaves us. After the video is over, I'm going home, so I won't be with you anymore. But even when I leave, God will still be there. Amazing! Question, do you just narrate or do you do other things? I can play you a video about God. Please do. Coming right up. God's story. Wilderness. So part of God's story is about how God took care of the Israelites, his special family in the wilderness. And it goes like this. For many years, the Israelites were forced to work as slaves in a place called Egypt. So God chose a guy named Moses to lead them out of Egypt into an amazing home where they could be free, called Canaan, or the Promised Land. From the moment the Israelites left Egypt, God made it clear that he was with them. He led the Israelites with a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. He actually split the Red Sea in two parts so they could walk to safety. But the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land was hard. In fact, the Israelites didn't know where to find food and water, and they didn't know when they would get to Canaan. So just three days after leaving Egypt, they started complaining. What are we going to drink? Now, Moses knew that God hadn't freed the Israelites from Egypt and parted the Red Sea just to let them die of thirst in the desert. So he asked the Lord to help, and God did. About a month later, the Israelites complained again. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. And they actually wished they could be slaves again. Kids, have you ever complained about something instead of trusting God for help? Well, guess what? God had a plan his family never could have imagined. In the morning, dew covered the ground, and when it was gone, there were flakes of food that looked like frost. 
The Israelites called it manna, mm -hmm. which means, what is it? Moses told them to eat it all and not to save any. But of course, some people saved a little just to be safe. Remember, they were worried they wouldn't have what they needed. So the next morning, the old manna was full of maggots, which are little bugs. Yuck! But the good news is, there was also new manna. See, God wanted them to trust him every single day. It might seem pretty clear to us that God was with them, but the Israelites weren't so sure. At one point, they even said to Moses, Is the Lord with us or not? Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us with thirst? The people had stopped trusting Moses, which really meant they had stopped trusting God. Moses knew God had a plan, so he asked him for help. Turns out, God had another miracle in store. God said, take your staff, strike the rock, and water will come gushing out. And it did. The Israelites stayed in the desert for about 40 more years. And all that time, God kept giving them food, water, rest, and protection. He even kept their clothes from wearing out. God's family couldn't take care of themselves on their own. They had to trust God. But he always gave them just enough, just in time, and often in ways they could never have expected. And that's the story of how God took care of his family in the wilderness. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God wanted his family to be free. God led them with a cloud and fire. He parted the Red Sea. The Israelites got thirsty and complained. God gave them water. They got hungry and complained again. God gave them food. They got thirsty and complained again. God gave them water, again. For 40 years, God gave them what they needed. All they had to do was trust every day. And that's a part of God's story. Welcome back, Kids Club. It looks as if our brave believer is even more lost than before. Let's zoom in closer to see. Wait, no, wrong way, wrong way. Oh, bother. Um, let me see if I can get a different camera view. Okay, that's better. What's better? Oh, nothing. I see you have a map. Are you lost? Nope. Uh, I was looking at this map to see how long it would take to walk through a desert. God's people were in the desert for 40 years. Now, I know that they didn't have cars or skateboards or scooters or unicycles, but still, 40 years still feels like a long time. I see. I can't imagine having to spend 40 years in a desert. And you know, after four days, I would've gone mad. But that's probably why the Israelites complained to Moses. They were hot, sweaty. They had all their belongings and no food or water. They probably thought they were going to die in the desert. But if we've learned anything, it's that God never leaves us and God never left them. In fact, he provided them with all the food and water that they needed for the entire time they were in the desert. Amazing. I know, right? <laughs> Unlike the Israelites, I came here in a car. So I'm going to head back there. I've had enough of the wilderness for one day. Uh, narrator, do you mind sending us to break? Certainly. Kids Club, this is a great time for us to take a break. While we break, how about you find someone to talk to? Ask them what it means when we say God never leaves us. When we get back, T will share more about God never leaving us. Hey, Kids Club, welcome back. Man, being left out in the wilderness sure did work up my appetite, so I came to one of my favorite pizza joints, Kitty Kitty Funland. Wait, this is really one of your favorite spots? Of course! Where else can I eat pizza, play super uber fun games, and feel like a kid again? Good point! Carry on! So, we know that God never leaves us, no matter what we go through. But we could be at our favorite food place, and God will be there. We could be having a really good time, and God will be there. <laughs> Rubber duckies. Come on, green rubber ducky. <laughs> we got it! <laughs> Ooh, whoa. We can be struggling and God will be there. Ooh, this is a hard choice. Uh, I want that one. No matter what we do or where we are, God never leaves us. 
In the Bible, God used a place called the wilderness to prove that he will always be with his people. My friend May can tell you exactly what I mean. So in the Bible, there are all these stories about people in the wilderness, and they're usually there for a reason. Like either God's gonna prove something to them, or he wants them to prove something to him. That's our... <sighs> Let's go. This is Israel, and this is the wilderness. It's actually a region in Israel that used to be called Moab. Today, you can find it on a map just west of the Dead Sea. I mean, look at this place. It's dry, it's dusty, it's hot. There isn't any shade because not much grows here. It's uncomfortable. You get sweaty and thirsty just being out here for 10 minutes. When the Bible talks about wilderness, it's a dangerous desert. There are rocks and cliffs and nasty, dangerous animals like the Deathstalker scorpion and one of the most poisonous snakes in the world, the Black Adder. It's where God would send people to be tested. When God rescued the Israelites out of slavery, he had Moses take them through the Red Sea and into the wilderness. God was testing Israel to see if they would trust him. Fast forward a long time. The wilderness is still there when Jesus steps onto the scene. Matthew chapter four says, Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The devil came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Now think about this for a minute. Jesus is in the wilderness where Moses and the Israelites had been tested and he's thirsty and hungry, just like they were thirsty and hungry. The Israelites had to learn to trust that God would give them food and water. How did Jesus handle this temptation? Does he do some magic trick to turn stones into bread? No, he says, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus knew his Bible. He knew that the whole point of the story was whether people would choose to trust God or not. Jesus trusted God even when he was hungry because he knew it wasn't food that kept him alive, it was God. The devil knew the Bible too though. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. Then the devil quoted the Bible. He said, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. That's an exact quote from Psalm 91. But Jesus quoted the Bible right back. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil tempted Jesus a third time, this time on a high mountain like this. Jesus could see cities, whole kingdoms from up here. The devil said, all this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. But Jesus shut down temptation a third time. Away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Woo! Jesus passed the test three times. Every time, Jesus remembered things God had said, that we should worship him alone, that God is the one who tests us, not the other way around and that we should trust him. Now, you don't have to go to the actual wilderness to be tested. You might be tested the next time you have to wait for something and need to be patient. You might be going through something that feels like a wilderness. You might feel alone or scared or even mad at God. Or you might even feel tempted to do something you know you're not supposed to. So what do you think? What's like the wilderness in your life? Are there times you feel tempted not to trust God or not to obey him? When do you feel worried that God won't take care of you? Whatever's going on, God is with you. And that's true wherever you are. It is amazing to know that God never leaves us. 
even when we are being tested and challenged with something really hard, God will still be there. God loves each and every one of us and he wants what's best for us. At any moment, any day, at any time, we can talk to God. That's called prayer. It can be something as simple as thank you, or it can be a story that might take a little bit of time. No matter how you pray, God loves it when you talk with him. I'm gonna say a quick prayer, and if you want to, you can say it with me. Dear God, thank you for being you. Thank you for loving me. I'm glad that you will never leave me. Everywhere I go, I know that you are always with me. I love you. There's no one above you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you can say a prayer like that or come up with another prayer. The key thing to remember is that God never leaves us. I'll see you soon, Kids Club. Pizza for everybody!